Mondays with Mark Allen. Welcome back, everybody. I want to share with you a conversation I had with a, a guy that I've coached now for many years, Justin Burroughs. He was asking me the other day how I got the name The Grip, a, a nickname that a lot of people called me when I was racing and still some of my closer friends call me now, The Grip. How did I get that name? And, and, and then he was also asking me, why did it have so much meaning? Did it mean that I had this like mental grip on, on racing and, and on really that top end performance or did it have meaning to me because I could just go into a race and just like crush it out and knew, knew that I had a grip on all my other competitors. Uh, so here's what I had to say to him. I, I got the name in the early 80s, a couple years into my career when I was, uh, I'd made a big uh, leap and a bunch of gains in my cycling actually and, and I did a lot of group rides in San Diego you know how those group rides are. You start out together and everybody's chatting and joking and then finally somebody gets serious. Well, this one year I was the guy who got serious early in the ride because I was ready to go and right away, you know, I'd have like five minutes of hearing this nonstop garbage being thrown around in the Peloton and it's like, okay, I'm done. And I would get down in the drops and uh, people would say, uh-oh, He's got the grip, hold on. And so somehow that stuck. I was called the grip. But anyway, the, the more important thing was Justin's question. Why did that nickname have meaning to me and, and did I like it? And I actually, I do like it, but probably for different reasons than people would think. Those who still call me the grip, they call me that because they know that the journey that I took to get to the top of the sport and to have the career that I did and to carry on life afterwards, was not always easy. As you know, I had six years in Kona where things didn't go the way I'd hoped. I had six years there where I had to pick up the pieces. Six years where I had to regroup, try to go back, do something different so that I could come back and actually have the race that I had envisioned. One year, 1987, I ended up in the hospital after the event, internal bleeding, pretty bad situation. The grip was the part of me that eventually was able to say, okay, that race is not my best performance. Let me see if I can figure out how to do it. And so it just represents that, that part of me that has always tried to, to learn something from the tough situations in life, to pick up the pieces and to use that knowledge to then go forward, carry it forward, until I finally did realize those dreams and visions that I had for myself. And again, it wasn't easy, but I think that actually really started way back when I was a kid. I had this game that I played. It was a, a board with these knobs on both sides and it had a, a steel ball that you had to move through a maze that had little holes that the ball could fall into. And so you had to work around the holes and find the right way to go through this maze and you turn these knobs so that the, it would tilt, the board would tilt and the ball would move. In the beginning when I first got it, of course, the ball goes down in the first two or three holes that it comes across, I, I had to figure that out. And then I would go a little bit further and I could get it to go a little bit further. And I would spend hours and hours doing this, just getting a little bit better. The grip in the making, trying to get it all the way through the maze until it got to that last place at the end on the other side. And then once I got that, I wanted to figure out how to do it consistently to get it there more than one time every 10 or 20 tries. That's kind of how the grip be became part of me, I guess, in that thing of just, it falls in the hole, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just what happened. And let me go back to the very beginning and try again and again and again until finally I get it. And that really has been, when somebody calls me the grip and they know who I am, that brings back this whole flood of memories of not just the, the great performances, the great moments in my life where something was achieved that I'd been working for, but the whole journey that took me there, the times where I could have easily given up, where that part of me that isn't the grip could have said, give it to somebody else, let somebody else do this, it's too hard, it's too painful, it's too boring, it's too monotonous. <clears throat> quiet your mind, be quiet. Is this still part of your dream? Yes, then pick up the pieces. What's the solution? I don't know today, but I'll try to find it. And tomorrow I'll try to find it until eventually I do become that person who can win a race, who can do something in sport that as a young child, I probably never could have imagined. So anyway, that's the story of the grip. 
it has a lot of meaning to me and, and hopefully you've had those moments and you can relate to that moments where you were ready to give up things that were challenging on a journey that you were on but you picked up the pieces you relaunched you re-engaged you gave it your your effort your energy again and again and again until you realized that dream until you became a different person a better person a stronger person because of that effort that you put in to become your best self mondays with mark allen make this week a great one